Hello and welcome to this Keysight video on how to configure time-gated FFT spectrum measurements. For today's agenda we will cover introduction, reference material, key concepts and parameters, the demonstration setup, the signal analyzer and test signal, then we'll do a demonstration of gated FFT with external trigger. The purpose of this demonstration is to show you the basic steps needed to configure the signal analyzer for time-gated FFT and help you successfully make time-gated measurements using the FFT gate method. Prerequisites. Time-gated spectrum measurement is a complex measurement method that requires at least a basic understanding of the analyzer's architecture, trigger types, and time-gate methods to successfully make time-gated measurements. It is recommended that you read the articles and manuals listed in the reference section of the agenda. Information from this demonstration is from Application Note 150 in the X-Series Measurement Guide and two articles written by Keysight engineers. Optimizing time gating and spectrum analysis and bringing new power and precision to gated spectrum measurements. Gate methods, video versus LO versus FFT. Video gating is a legacy gate method. Normally it would only be used for backwards compatibility. For example, if you wrote some code around one of the older analyzers using video gating, uh, then in this case you may want to use video gating on the X-Series analyzer. In all cases, gated LO is better. Gated LO is a relatively new gate method. It has many advantages over other gate methods including speed and is the most used gate method. Gated FFT has narrower RBW capability than gated LO. Because of this, it is best for real short pulse widths and for pulses with long off times. In these cases, gated FFT will also be faster than gated LO. Trigger functions. Time gating can use RF burst, external, and periodic timer triggers. Periodic timer trigger is a very useful trigger function, often overlooked, that can take the place of an external trigger. If your device under test doesn't have a trigger source, use a periodic timer trigger. Gated FFT rules of thumb for RBW and gate settings. For FFT, there is a minimum RBW that can be calculated using 1.83 divided by the pulse width. For this demonstration, I won't calculate the RBW gate length and gate delay. We will start with a relatively wide span with the RBW autocoupled. Once the gate is turned on, we will adjust the span, RBW, and gate delay for best results. Note, uh, in gated FFT, gate length and the RBW setting are coupled. Gated FFT doesn't have a separate setting for the gate length. Gated FFT, positioning the gate. Since this is FFT, you won't need to account for RBW charge time. For gated FFT, position the gate toward the first half of the pulse. For this demonstration, we'll be using the N9020A X-Series Signal Analyzer. For the analyzer time gating external trigger input, we will use the analyzer's trigger 1-in on the rear panel. The test signal for this demonstration will be an RF pulse CW 1 GHz with a 4 microsecond pulse width and a pulse repetition interval of 10 milliseconds. Here's a demonstration of gated FFT. My signal is a 4 microsecond pulse and the off time is 10 milliseconds. Now if you uh, remember from gated LO, you had to calculate the resolution bandwidth based on uh, the, the pulse width. So there are calculations for a gated LO measurements would give us a resolution bandwidth setting of about uh, 5 megahertz resolution bandwidth. And so uh, 5 megahertz resolution bandwidth wouldn't give you very good frequency resolution when you're measuring an RF pulse that's only about 4 microseconds long. With uh, gated FFT, we can use uh, resolution bandwidths that are, are much narrower and so which will give us really good frequency resolution for a, a, a narrow pulse of only 4 microseconds. And I already have this set up for the carrier frequency 1 gigahertz and a span of 100 megahertz. So let's go ahead and go right into the sweep controls and then the gate menu. And you'll notice that when I turn my gate view on, uh, there's my uh, ref, my blue reference line and my min fast time 
and the, of course the min fast time gives you set the settling time of the yellow that's needed and um, now watch when I switch from gate method from LO to FFT the blue reference line and the min fast line go away because it's FFT we don't have to worry about the LO settling time now I'm going to go to a gate delay of zero and you'll see my start and stop my gate start and stop move over now for the triggering of this measurement I'm going to use gate source external one uh, you could also use a periodic timer trigger but for this example I'm going to use the external trigger either one will work and now I'm going to go to my uh, gate view and I'm going to speed up my sweep time a little bit so that I can see so that I have a better view of the pulse and then I'm going to go back to gate delay and use that to position my trigger now remember for gated FFT we want to try to position the gate in the first half of the pulse and now that I have that position I can go ahead and turn on my gate and there we have the signal now from here you you can you can leave this in uh, the gate you can leave gate on and gate view off and while you're looking at it in the frequency domain while it's being gated you can still adjust the gate delay kind of tweak that a little bit you can see that on the signal I have a little bit of a skirt and it's a CW signal but I still have a, a skirt there uh, so that means I could go ahead and adjust my gate delay a little bit to kind of optimize it for the measurement so I'm going to move it over to the left a little bit and you can see that I have a, a much uh, a much cleaner skirt now and then I can go back in the gate view and I can see that I'm still positioned correctly on the pulse now that I have the measurement set up and I'm uh, gating correctly and I'm using external trigger I can go into my frequency controls and I can change my stop frequency to 2 gigahertz and still get a a good clean measurement which will allow me to, to view the spectral content at higher frequencies and I can even go out to 3 gigahertz and you, c you can see the second harmonic right here and I can even change my detector type to average which will clean that up a little bit and then I'll get a better view of my harmonic and I'll go to frequencies 4 gigahertz this would also be a good time to note that in gated LO the time to do the measurement would be uh, probably about 10 times longer than what it takes in FFT so this will this will also improve your measurement time thank you for watching this Keysight demonstration and gated FFT if you have any questions on this demonstration please go to www.keysight.com find contact us thank you